Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today I'm going to be doing my weekly wrap up for the third week of August. I cannot believe that we are about to start the last week of August. It's just crazy. And so this is my wrap up for the third week and in the third week for Garb August was uh, Sex or Violent, and so I picked a book for both of them. I finished one, and I'm almost finished with the other one. I just, I ran out of time because I had some other books that I had to finish. And so I will start off with the one that I decided to put to the side, though. And this is one that I didn't even mention it, I don't think, last week, because I just I really haven't been reading it, and so I've decided, you know, I'm just going to put it to the side, and that's that Alfred Hitchcock's uh, Coffin Corner, it's a bunch of short stories, and I don't know, but I think the stories are just a little too short for me. I don't do well with short stories in the first place, and most of them, by the time it got to the end, I was like, I don't under I don't get it. Um, maybe short stories aren't for me, because I need some kind of conclusion, and not some kind of open, okay, that's it, and you don't get nothing else. I don't know, but I've decided to just put it to the side for now. I like the cover though, it's kind of, the cover's cool, but. And then um, one of the books that I was racing to get finished because I needed to have it done by the 22nd and everything was An Irish Bookshop Murder by Lucy Connolly. This is the first book in the Mercy McCarthy series. It's Cozy Mystery. And this one has Mercy and her twin sister, Lizzie, moving to Ireland because they found out that they had a, a grandfather that they never even knew existed. They didn't know anything about their father's side of the family. And uh, he had passed away, but in doing so, he left them his cottage and his bookshop in the place of Shamrock Cove. And this place is also has the court. And in the court, to me, it reminds me a little bit of a gated community. But you have, uh, you know, your certain people that have been approved into the court. And basically, the court, the property in the court is always handed down to somebody else in your family. So it always stays in the family and things like that. If you don't have anybody then they can um, they can decide to uh, gift it to another member of the court or they can have an open lottery and they're like people are on a list that would like to move into the court and everything so you know kind of fancy I guess <laughs> and uh, so it's like a small town but kind of a fancy small town I guess and everything with how they run things and it, it's ruled you know like everything has to be a certain way which is why it reminded me of like kind of a gated community so they go there and decide to start over because they're they're needing a new start mercy is a writer she writes mystery um books and everything and she's had a stalker in new york and she's you know kind of been leery about that and lizzie though is the one that's had a lot of the problems. I mean, not only did their mother pass on because of, I think, cancer or something just recently, but Lizzie also lost some other people. And I'll let you read it to find out. But, uh, yeah, so she's had a lot of, like, loss. And there were a time whenever Mercy was really afraid that she might actually, you know, do something about it, whether it's on accident or not, because she was really depressed. So moving to Ireland is just a good thing for them to do. And of course, on their first day there, they're having a party to welcome them to the court. And there's this mean old man, he's a judge, he's a retired judge, uh, says some nasty things to them and everything. And they're like, you know, who are you? You know, they don't even know who the guy is. But uh, nobody knew about uh, Mercy and Lizzie until, like, whenever they found out they were coming. Well, because, well, their grandfather had, you know, not known about them for too long. And by the time he did find out about them, he didn't want to burden them with the fact that he was dying. So he never caught in contact with them. So, yeah, it was a surprise for everybody. 
But anyway, that old man ends up dying, and of course, uh, because they're new to the court and everything, they are kind of looked on as maybe suspects, especially with the uh, little cop there, the Garda, who, um, you know, he's trying to be friendly to them, but also, um, you know, it does look kind of weird. They were the ones that found the body, or, or him, as he was dying. Yes, she did try, Mercy did try to give him, like, uh, CPR and everything, but they were there, and he did accuse them of being the person that murdered them, but, you know, it was probably just the ramblings of somebody who was dying and everything, but then something else happened, which made him also look at them and everything. Now, I thought the overall that this was a pretty decent book, but at the same time, there were things in it that I just didn't appreciate and I don't like. And it's a personal preference, really, for me. Um, I can overlook certain things as long as it's not, like, thrown into my face very much. But um, there were other things that... You know, I read for enjoyment. I don't really need the social buzzwords of the day thrown in. It just makes me roll my eyes and things. I'm, I'm not there for the social commentary where other people, they like to read about that kind of thing. And they like that stuff being added to their books, and I don't. So uh, it did lessen my enjoyment of the book, but I think for other people, they wouldn't enjoy it. Um, I did think that at times the mystery was a little kind of hard to follow and figure out but in the end i pretty much had it figured out but i didn't have the why i never get the the actual why they do it i always just figure out who it is that's going to do it but i do think that um people will enjoy this book i gave it a 3.5 i'm on the fence on whether i want to try the next one or not i really did like the characters though it's got great characters and everything it's just, I don't know, I thought the, just, it might be just that the author throwing things in there and stuff, it just, I don't know. But, like I said, it's just me. Then the uh, next one I had was uh, Rum and Razor by Jessica Fletcher and Donald uh, Bain, and this is the third book in the uh, Murder, She Wrote series. And, uh... I've only read three because I'm reading in order, so this is the third book, and so I think this probably is my least favorite one out of the three that I've read. So I was struggling to get that done, which is why I didn't get all the reading I wanted to get done, because I had those two books that I was trying to get finished up. And in this one, Jessica Fletcher is going to visit some friends that have moved to uh, the islands of St. Thomas, and they have a... Uh, like a hotel or an inn. I think it's called the Lover's Lagoon or something like that. And um, she goes there to kind of vacation and spend some time with her friends and everything. And then she gets there and finds out that they're having a lot of troubles with the lagoon itself and some of the things that are going on and that maybe her friends aren't quite as with it and have everything going as she kind of thought they did and then um, you have the murder, and then she's got to try to figure out what's going on, and she finds out a lot of things about her friend that she didn't know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it just, it took a while for the, the murder part to actually happen, and I know this is something we talk about a lot when it comes to cozy mysteries. Some people like a lot of other stuff and a little mystery and some like the mystery to happen really fast and that to be like one of the main focuses now with this I think if it was set in Cabot Cove I would have been okay with the the murder part not happening until about 28 percent into the book because I would know the characters and they would probably be a lot of characters from Cabot Cove maybe in the book since this one is set in St. Thomas and you don't know any of the characters except for Jessica Fletcher, it really took forever, it seemed like, to get to that part. I wanted the mystery to happen. I wanted to know who it was going to be. I had several people in mind on who might be the one that become the victim, and I was wanting to get to that part. <laughs> Sounds bad, I know, but 
when it comes to mysteries for me i am more about the mystery than i am about the cozy feel of the town and since she was international we don't even get the cozy feel of the town so i was just ready for the sleuthing to begin and to figure out what was going on but by the time we got to that i was even just a little bit done with this the the book anyway i just it just never really got back to how I wanted to enjoy it and so I gave it three stars it was okay I mean I'm hoping that the next one I read will be better but we'll see <laughs> and then uh, the killing time with cozy has been doing a read-along of the Georgia peach series and so the next book I finished was war and peaches war and peach I want to call it war and peaches because it just seems like that should be what it's called but it's war and peach by Susan Forlong and it's the last book that was only a trilogy and I'm kind of glad because this has just been kind of a a mid kind of okay series for me this one is about Nola who is um, she had come home and she's made a go at making like peach jams and preserves and things because her family has a peach orchard and everything and um, in this one they're having a mayoral race and there's two candidates. One's kind of seen as an outsider because she's only lived there for like four years, while the other one had been there a long time. And then something happens to one of the candidates, and then you've got the sleuthing part, and you have another candidate that comes in. So it's like, hmm, what about that candidate? You know, is there something? There was definitely enough suspects and everything to try to, you know, figure out what was going on and everything um i don't know i just thought it was okay i i give it 3.5 stars um which i think is what i've gave pretty much all of the books in this series <laughs> so it was just okay and then the uh, next one was the actual one for garbagus which i finished the young and violent by uh, Vin Packers and this is the first book I've ever read by Vin Packers. This is a gold medal book from I think it's 1956. Yeah it's from 1956. This one is the second printing from November of 1959. So it's a pretty old book and I seen a review that said this reminded them of um, the West Side Story without the song and dance and I've never seen the West Side Story but I know a bit about what it's about and I would say that that was pretty much what this is about since it's from the 50s and I looked up uh, gangs and things in the 50s and that's kind of when it got kind of like it, it's um, surgeon in like these teen gangs that certain blocks like they have the kings they are called uh, the kings of the earth and they lived on park avenue in new york city and it says that their turf extended 10 blocks along the left side of the park from 98th street up to 109th street and then you had this other gang that must have been pretty nearby and stuff so like certain blocks belong to certain gangs and everything and that's pretty much what it was it was about these young men talking about you know their turf and these others and rumbling sorry about the wasp I don't like it running around but it happens my room likes wasps for some reason anyway it's pretty much about uh, these teens uh, drama talking about wanting to rumble basically uh, this one guy and his name is um, Rick it's Rigo something does it say here on the okay Rigoberto Gonzalez and I think a lot of them are Puerto Rican but he go he goes by Gober, and so Gober Gonzalez. Uh, there's this girl. Her name's Babe, and 
she has been seen with Flathead Pontiac, who belongs to this other gang. I think it was the Jungle Boys. And, uh, anyway, Babe is supposed to be Gober's girl. So, they're going to be rumbling because of this or whatever it is. Meanwhile, Gober has this other girl that he's interested in. And he's not really even interested in this other girl. But it's to save face or whatever. That they were going to have to rumble or whatever. And so, I'm like, you guys are so stupid. They're going to fight over a girl that neither one really cares about. Because they got to save face with his other ones that are in his group or whatever in the gang everybody knows that babe is uh, gober's girl well, why don't he just tell everybody that i'm over her and i don't care anymore and i've got this other chick you know i don't understand teenage male logic i guess i don't know <laughs> well, i think more than anything it was just something that they for them to do um they didn't have anything better than to hang out in these little gangs and fight each other. They would bring um, knives and uh, pipes and bats and everything. Uh, and that's how they would fight. There was this one guy in here who, I don't necessarily think he was a social worker, but I do think he tried to work with the youth. His name was Dan, and he knew what was going on, and he was trying to, you know help those teenagers but sometimes you just can't help what doesn't want to be helped and so yeah then you have like the big fight thing at the end and it's kind of sad at the end because it was just a waste of people dying and things and stuff so yeah I don't like I don't know anything about this author I've never read anything from him before I do like the artwork I think it's pretty cool and I do like that it's got like the sketch art or whatever on the back, which is kind of cool of the same like picture, but you know, in sketch form and everything. But I read it. It was 144 pages <laughs> and it's done. <laughs> the other book that I was working on is the Hard, hard Writing Posse. It's the Headhunter book number three by E.J. Hunter. This is pure garbage. It's definitely pure garbage. Um, the only reason I'm still reading it is I'm kind of curious to see what happens to the traveling bordello. <laughs> Do they uh, find a permanent place to somebody else? She, uh, Cassidy ends up... Uh, getting the other guy, the guy that's running the traveling bordello and it's him put in jail. Well, those girls, they've been doing this kind of thing since they were young. Like some of them are like 14 and things and it's all they know what to do. And this guy took care of them. Well, so now she's got to take care of them. <laughs> and she's like, oh, because she's a bounty hunter. She is after this one guy. She doesn't really have time to deal with these people. She, she's a little bit of a hypocrite because she likes that kind of thing just as much as they do. <laughs> she just doesn't get paid for it. <laughs> they meet these cattle driver. They, they're driving their cattle across or whatever. And so they are asking the guys if they want to come over. Well, because they are sex workers she's not so she's just a freebie she still found a guy to you know have sex with so what's the difference to them they're kind of like she's being a little bit hypocritical on telling them that they don't have to do that kind of thing when she sees a guy she likes she does the same thing so i you know just the fact they're getting paid for it but so i thought she's a little bit hypocritical of that kind of stuff but and that stuff is fairly cheesy too it's very cheesy in this book and it's easily skipped over thank goodness because <laughs> I'm just like okay I'm done I'm done with that but yeah I I think I have 70 something pages left or whatever I'm at 141 and 
there's 219 pages. The some of the plot and everything is also that there are these uh and the author has a note back here. Um in Kansas they were having um something to do with the courthouse and the county seat on where it was supposed to be. The county seat war that raged between in western Kansas from 1867 to 1889, land speculators called boomers uh, purchased huge, huge tracts of land, organized a develop, development country, country, organized a development company and initiated town sites. And so now they're having like these certain towns are having like these wars over who gets the county seat and they're stealing their ledgers and stuff like each county is breaking into the other county and stealing like ledgers and stuff it, it's really a little all over the place and I it's it's just pure garbage read uh yes do I, I think I've missed out on some things when it comes to like what happened to her father but would I ever go back and read the first book no once this is read, it's, it's done. I'm never reading in this series ever again. But I do want to finish it just to see what happens at the end. <laughs> That's it. Okay. And uh, next week, or this, this coming week, the one we're working on now is novelization. So my novelization is Adventures in Babysitting. And it is a novel by Elizabeth Foucher and based on the motion picture written by David Simpkins. I have not seen Adventures in Babysitting in a long time, so I am looking forward to reading this and then watching the movie and seeing how different they might be or how closely they are since it's a novelization. I don't know how close novelizations go. I don't read a lot of them. <laughs> so this will be kind of fun and interesting and it's really small and I like that. So that means that I might be able to uh, fit something else in that I didn't think I was going to get to because this one's small. We'll see how it goes. But as of right now, I'm, this is my Garbogus book for now. And I am listening to um, Grave Peril. I'm almost done with that by Jim Butcher. And I will probably finish that one up this week. Could probably be counted for Garb August. And there's something else. There's something else, but I can't remember what it is. So I guess you'll find out along with, you know, me, because I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, so let me know how your uh, third week in August went. Did you find a good book that you would like to recommend to me? Let me know down in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.